a big applause. So how are you guys doing? You made it. You made it here. This magical place where we get refreshed, energized, and the best of the best. We share our secrets with the enemy. <laughs> So I've, I've spoken with so many of you already today. I know many of you are excited to pick up some nuances, nuggets, refresh yourself, and go into the most productive season of our profession. September, October, November, and December, right? Which sets up 2018. So let me just take you back to Friday. How many of you remember Friday? Just a couple of... Well, a week ago, right? Today. So uh, about 9 o'clock on Friday night, I live in Houston, and I'm looking at the weather on the updates, and I'm thinking to myself, there is about a 5% chance that the airports in Houston will be closed this week. So as a leader, one of the things we do is we take preemptive measures just in case something could go wrong, right? We anticipate what could happen. And we made a decision then and there, my daughter who's here running the event in the back, we said we probably should pack what we need, put it in the Denali, the car, and start driving towards Orlando, just in case we can't get out of town and this event is a disaster. And of course, a lot of people said, because you're calling friends, and they, yeah, that, that doesn't make sense. Why would you leave? You're going to be on the road halfway, and then you're going to realize you just wasted a bunch of time on the road instead of just flying. And I really thought that in my mind. I said, that's probably what's going to happen. Probably. So we throw everything in the car. Julie and I start heading towards Baton Rouge through Louisiana. And my wife, Anne, and my two little ones, Dulcie and Fia, three years old, eight years old, they stay behind. And we get to Baton Rouge, we get a place, and all of a sudden, the 5% goes to 15, and then 20, and then 25% chance that the airports will be closed this week. And then all of a sudden, things get really bad, because you've heard of the hurricane, right? You've heard how it came in and how quickly it rolled in. And now we're up all night long through the, through, till 8 o'clock in the morning with our friends, with Anne, on the phone because they're losing internet access. They don't know, should I stay or should I go? <laughs> we had neighbors that the water came in two, three feet. They had to grab their children, get in the car, try to drive away, children in the back, the car gets flooded, get stuck in the middle of the night. They have their cell phone. It's giving them tornado warnings, which means tornadoes are nearby on the ground. And they're in the car for six hours in the dark with their children. Things can change quickly. Now, the emotion that I felt was, why did I leave my wife and children behind? It didn't seem like the problem at the moment. So there's this guilt that happens. So, just to give you a little idea of what is going on, I'm going to hit the slide here. Uh, I've got to go back one. So, this is the 10,000 sky view. It looks beautiful, actually, doesn't it? Like, in a way, it looks like a beautiful image. And sometimes inside of our profession, we have this beautiful image going on, don't we? Because we have social media where we can filter it and make it look all pretty, and we kind of look awesome. Um, this is what one of the freeways in Houston looks like normally. So this is 610 East, uh, something that I would drive probably a couple times a week. It's about 12 lanes across. Once the hurricane came, it looked like a river. Once the hurricane came, Everything changed. It didn't matter which neighborhood you lived in. It didn't matter how you voted. It didn't matter anything. Nothing mattered. You were just stuck. 
And of course, on the high view, this is another, those are all freeways that look like rivers. Those are actually freeways right there. That's I-10, which is the major freeway that goes between the west and the east of the country. Nobody can pass through. This is what neighborhoods look like. Houston is the size of Israel. Houston is underwater. If you take the last three hurricanes, Katrina, Andrew, and Ike, and you combine all the rainfall from those three hurricanes, it's less rainfall than what hit Houston in a 48-hour period. 55 inches of rain. You could look for miles. I've had a friend go up in a helicopter, and it just continues and continues. And it's difficult to have empathy when we're not there. And inside of our profession, empathy is one of the key ingredients so that when we're sitting down with just like somebody that Randy explained many of the examples to put ourselves in their shoes and say, let me see how you see the world and then let's together, shoulder to shoulder, go help change your family's life and your family's future. See, it's not about recruiting 500 people at once and then trying to recruit 500 more the next month. It's about finding the one finding empathy, getting to know them, putting your arm around them, and then let's go to work together. That's our profession. That's what separates us from everybody else. So I'm just showing this because it's difficult to have empathy. And I can tell you, you can feel the emotion, right, in my heart, because I have hundreds of text messages that I haven't gotten back to. Some of them are checking in on me and my family. Some of them are saying, how could you help me? We've been connecting people from this side of town to that side of town. That's what we do, right? That's what we do. This is how deep the water is. That's a light sign. That's South Sam Houston Freeway. Thousands of people go on that road every day. Hundreds of thousands, because the city holds five plus million. This is what resilience looks like. This is what fortitude looks like. This is what it looks like when you say, you know what? Whatever happens, it's a blessing. Let's go out and take it on. Right? Whatever happens, we're going to turn this into a future victory. Whatever happens, we're going to band together and get it done. This is a couple of miles from my home. People in boats, the Cajun army showed up. Those are our friends from Louisiana. They get in their boats and they came over and they have a gun there in case they're looters, and then they go and pull people out of the water and out of their homes. Children are affected by this. Doesn't matter who you are, this is what we do. And the message for me, and I can tell you I've been on the phone with over 100 people from Houston. There's not a, there's not a strong Texan that hasn't cried with me. Because the emotion of, the, of a quick, rapid tragedy, then coupled with the emotion of all the volunteers and people that are helping, it's a lot to take on. Now you look at this line here, and you say, is that a line for food? Is that a line for iPhone upgrades? Is that a line for free pizza? <laughs> Right? Is it a line for water, maybe? Because this is in Houston. This was taken just a couple of days ago. What is the line for? And you know what this line is for? It's a line of people volunteering to help. It's a line of people volunteering to help. And isn't that what we do? Aren't we actually going out there, finding the mom that works at the Dairy Queen, that is crying herself to sleep with two children, and saying, I have to find a way to have a better life for them. I've got to find a way to be home with them more. I've got to find a way. And what are we? We're that line of volunteers that are going out what we do best as a profession is we go out and we have empathy and we take our time to find that person who needs help. We put our arm around them. We slow down. We listen. We empathize. We offer help 
even though immediately that doesn't give us reward. You know, our reputation, we make our money based on the ones who stay, but our reputation has to be built on the ones who leave. And if we go out there with a volunteer mindset, and we care, and we listen, and if they join our business, so they don't. If they join our business, and then they quit. If they remember what we do as a profession, what we each do, which was care, listen, emphasize, give us every, if they take a step, we take a step. If that's what we're known for, we overcome any existing prejudices with excellence. And when I see these images, and yes, it's personal to me, but when I see these images, it reminds me of those of us that do direct selling the proper way. So I want you to keep this image in your mind when you go out and you're sitting next to somebody on the plane or the bus or wherever it may be. They all have a story. Take a moment to create that conversation. And you'll learn this weekend how to create conversations. That part's easy. Because what we have to offer is extraordinary. We don't have to exaggerate it. The truth is good enough, as Dana Collins says. Right? We just have to go out and be empathetic to their situation. Can we do that together as a team? Because really, it doesn't matter if we're in different companies. We represent one profession, the direct selling channel, and we're looked upon as one. And whatever we do reflects upon the karma credits that we have with the outside world. And I believe that we can create amazing karma credits for the positive if we lead with what's the sole strength, the biggest strength of our profession, which is people loving on people. People loving on people. So, it all, you know, we, we need to get a new mindset. And what I mean by a new mindset is a new perspective, a new way to look at our situations, a new way to look at our circumstances. Um, get our mind ready for this coming year because we have a lot, all of us, on the line for this coming year. It's going to be a year filled with blessings, miracles, opportunities. Doesn't matter what we're going through, right? Don't waste another year if you feel like that's happened to you, right? There's somebody in Houston on the second floor of their home wishing, praying to God they could switch spots with you right now. Don't put it to waste. They wish they, wish they could have that. Doesn't mean they're not going to be fine. They will be fine. Right? Houston, they're going to rally together. Houstonians rally. Now, there's a faculty member named Jerry Scribner. How many of you remember Jerry's story from a couple of years ago, right? Jerry's an incredible heart-giving guy. And Jerry's, maybe he's watching if he has internet. Jerry, hi. We're always thinking about you. Jerry's in a shelter right now in Houston. His house has been mandatorily evacuated. It's going to be flooded because they're letting a dam out. And he's been in that shelter for the last five days. And we get updates, you know, through Snapchat from his daughter. I text him every day. And you know what Jerry's done? He went to, they put him in a shelter with Mattress Mac. Mattress Mac is a hero, folk hero in Houston, who started a furniture store and, and expanded. And the moment that there needed to be shelter, he opened his furniture stores and he let people in. And people said, well, you've got new furniture there and you've got new couches there and you've got new beds there. They're going to get ruined. And he said, that doesn't matter. Let the people in create a shelter. And Jerry's over there. And of course, it's so difficult for Jerry and his family. And you know what he's done? He's taken this opportunity. He said, I'm going to turn this into a victory. And what Jerry's done, he said, I am going to stay here, even if I can leave, to continue to serve those that are in the shelter. That's happening right now from one of our faculty members. He's not going to be here this weekend, but that's what he's doing because he's decided to continue who he is as a Christian, as, that's, you know, that's his faith, and who he is as a direct seller, and who he is as a human being, which is, even if I'm in dire straits right now, I'm going to keep helping people that are coming in. And I want you to give a hand to Jerry. You got this, Jerry. And when I say Jerry, that's his wife as well, and his children, they're all in. Jared Maidenberg is one of the faculty members. He's in Houston as well. He, you know, he's helping out. He can't get out. My wife told me, she said, Art, or honey, <laughs> she doesn't call me Art, I said, honey, you're going to come back to an empty house. I said, is everything okay? Because we call each other five times a day right now. 
which is more than normal. And she said, yes, I just want you to know that you're going to return to an empty house. So what do you mean? She said, well, I've given away the, the blankets. I've given away the, the pillows. I've given away your shoes. I've given away all the food. There's nothing left in the house. <laughs> and I said, fantastic. <laughs> Perfect. This is why I love you so much. And it's not just her. It is literally hundreds of thousands of Houstonians that are rallying together. And I share this with you because if I can think of one profession that epitomizes that, it's us. It's the direct selling profession. And so my challenge this weekend for you is to take what the faculty is going to be teaching you. We've set this event up, and of course there are some a lot of people missing because Houston's a hub, so all our friends from Houston can't be here. All the flights that go from South America into Houston to here, many of them can't be here. A lot of the flights around the country are affected because Houston is a hub for Southwest Airlines, for United Airlines. All those pilots are grounded. All those flight attendants are grounded. So your job today, and those of you watching at home on Samocast, is to be more attentive. Be three times as attentive as you normally be for the three people that are missing in your spot right now. Be three times as loud, be three times as supportive, and be three times as charitable and giving and compassionate as you can possibly imagine. Because this is gonna be an incredible weekend. The lineup that we have for you, as you can see the stage, everything is designed for your learning so that you can step into your greatness, into being legendary. Can you do that? So yes, there's going to be struggles, and yes, there's going to be challenges, and yes, there's going to be tests, and we have to turn that struggle into opportunity, into victory. And some of you probably have organizations in Houston. My suggestion is reach out to them. This weekend, we're going to be talking a whole lot about retention. How do we keep more of the distributors and customers we have? How many of you be interested in more points on that? All the faculty has been instructed within their t talks to have retention factors. On Sunday, I'm doing a whole talk just on retention. Some of the things that you may not even be thinking about you should be asking will be covered in that session. One of the things I do is every morning, after I go through my morning ritual, I send out 10 text messages to people within my organization or just people that I love. Text messages of encouragement, of love, of support, of volunteering to see if there's anything I can do for them every day. I do it as much for myself as I do it for them. I do it in depth within the organization so that it has an you know, upside-down Christmas tree effect. Then you have 100 people on your team doing the same thing. Guess what? 10,000 messages a day, every morning going out to support. It's a retention factor. It's easy to do. It makes a huge impact, especially once it duplicates on your team. So my challenge to you today is, are you willing to send out 10 messages tomorrow morning before we come into the session of encouragement and love to just 10 people who you know? Show me a show of hands. How many of you are willing to go all in? See, look at that. Times 10, huge impact tomorrow. So I'm going to rejoice. As difficult as the week has been, I'm going to rejoice because I know there's blessings. I know we're going to turn a lot of these challenges into huge opportunities. And I'm looking at this room right now, and I know many of you, and I know that the next year is going to be extraordinary. <laughs>